guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for Ravenswood Season 1, Episode 9, Along Came a Spider. And this was another great episode. I definitely really enjoyed it. Um, I will say that it was probably one of the weaker episodes of the show. It wasn't terrible. It was a really great episode, I will say that. It was still great. It really was. But... It wasn't as exciting as the past few episodes have been. It was still a really great episode. It just wasn't as good as some of the other ones we've gotten. I just think it's probably the weakest out of all the ones, but it was still a great episode. Um, and I really am enjoying some of the things that's uh, going on, and especially Olivia's plot. I think Olivia and Luke and Remy's plot, very strong, probably the strongest part of, uh, this, of this episode. Let's go to uh, Miranda and Caleb first because they are the central focus of the show. So uh, let's just let's go to them. So we open up this uh, cemetery. Uh, oh, that's about Olivia and Luke. Uh, let's talk about Caleb first. Caleb's plot was that he is now, as Miranda told him in the last episode, we heard Miranda say this, and we were expecting this, and uh, that's exactly what happened. Caleb is now attending school in Ravenswood. And uh, he is a class taught by Mr. Price, who knows a lot about the town's history. If you remember, that's the guy who refused to give them that book. You know, he said, oh, no, 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 don't take the book. I'm not giving you the book. And uh, this was definitely a very interesting teacher. And as his class finishes up, he tells him that he'd appreciate if he'd stop by, if he'd stop texting during class. And Mr. Price tells Caleb that he has some strange dealings with Mr. Collins and he might want to be careful now that he's working as Collins' groundskeeper. He tried to take some pictures of the church on Collins' estate, but Price tells Caleb that he was chased off. Caleb tells Mr. Price that the church is in dis disrepair, unsafe, but Mr. Price says that's not the truth, it's perfectly fine, so what is Mr. Collins hiding in that church? That's what Caleb is set out to do. He wants to find out what he's hiding in that church, and that's exactly what they do. Caleb and Miranda are then talking to each other. Caleb proceeds to eat string cheese very awkwardly. And I thought it was a... I, I actually... I, I like some of the comedic relief in this episode. Uh, that's not really something we've been getting on this show, and I did like that. There was a scene where he's eating it, and she's like, How can you eat that in front of me? I'm dead. I can't eat that. And uh, I thought that was a pretty funny scene. So, uh, Caleb is searching through Colin's secret office for a key to the chapel. Uh, he looks through all the drawers and covers, but doesn't have much luck until he finds keys in a small vase. As he's running out, he has a strange run-in with a ghost. The room starts shaking. He sees a strange face in the chemical vases. The ghost knocks over the jars of chemicals, which quickly releases fumes into the air. The doors are locked, but Caleb eventually breaks free of the room and runs to safety. So... Um, Collins is sweeping up the mess that Caleb and the ghost made, and, uh, Olivia comes to visit him, and she admits, I need you to help my mother, and that was the plot, that was Olivia's plot, but it's still, what I like is that Olivia and Luke's plot is kind of starting to tie in to Caleb and Miranda's plot. It's not exactly tying in, because it's two separate storylines, but they're starting to connect, and I enjoyed that about this episode. Uh, we saw that last episode as well, but really this one, we're really starting to see it's connecting, especially with Remy. Uh, Caleb and Miranda, they then break into the chapel. Miranda sees a sh large spider crawling on Caleb's shoulder. It seems ghostly in nature. I thought that scene was actually pretty funny. She's like, oh my god, there's a spider. And Caleb's just being so calm about it and not even caring about it. it it's really funny. And in that scene, I will say that I actually do want these two together. I know he loves Hannah. I know Hannah's the one he loves, but... In my opinion, I think he's slowly falling in love with Miranda, and I'd actually like to see the two of them together. And they seem like a couple in that scene. They did. That scene where Miranda was, like, freaking out and Caleb was, like, remain calm. Uh, they seem like a couple. I, I, you guys can comment about that, but I think that Caleb and Miranda would make a cute couple. You know, they're supposed to be together because of the five-pack, and it's not just because I want them together. It's because of the five-pack. They're basically going to get together no matter what because that's what the five-pack says is supposed to happen. Those two are supposed to fall in love. That's the five pack says. Uh, Caleb doesn't perceive it, but Miranda does. Once they get inside the church, all seems well, except for a strange note that's illuminated on the stone floor. There are six names listed in the note, Rivers being among them. So Caleb and Miranda tell Olivia about the note they saw on the chapel floor. They tell her that it's Dylan's surname was on the floor, and they all wonder why he isn't marked. And uh, this was where it starts to tie in, because this was really, really big, and... Um, I'll get to that a little bit more with the Luke and Olivia storyline, but then we see Caleb, he checks out the church again. 
He he checks out the church again. The strange ghost woman uh, is striking him. You know, the woman we saw at the beginning of the episode is stalking him. Above the spot where the names are listed, there are a swarm of spiders. And um, that's it for Caitlin and Marin. I thought it's definitely a really strong plot. But I felt that Luke and Olivia's plot was a lot stronger this episode. And what I like is that Remy is now involved in this. And uh, Remy and Luke, we, we got to see more of the relationship. I know I said the relationship was boring. Now I actually do like these two together. I know I, a lot of people have said to me that the relationship is boring. I don't think the relationship is boring. I think it's normal high school love. It's nothing special. It's just normal relationship. It's really nothing that special. But it's a good relationship. I like, I like that. So uh, let's just, um, so with Luke and Olivia, the show actually opened with Luke and Olivia. Olivia, Luke, and their mother, they're visiting their father's gravesite. Mr. Collins has replaced their father's vandalized gravestone. A detective comes to place Luke and Olivia's mother under arrest. And the strange woman looks on when they leave. A spider crawls out of her face. She's of a ghostly variety. Olivia and Luke uh, argue about uh, Miss Dylan's whereabouts as Olivia and Luke wait outside of the police station. But, like, Mr. Collins comes out of the percent. They still suspect him. They think Collins would spring up to burying the knife in Olivia and Luke's yard, thus linking their mother to the murder. So they're talking about um, their mother. She sends Luke to go get her coat in the car. Meanwhile, she tells uh, her mother tells Olivia to be her brother's keeper. He doesn't need to get in trouble with the law, especially not now. Dylan shows up at Olivia's doorstep. This is a very big scene, is when Dylan shows up at Olivia's doorstep. I mean, this was definitely really big, because the thing is, Olivia suspects Dylan now. Thing is, though, let's think of this as, like, a pre Liars thing. This reminds me a lot of Aria with Ezra and Olivia with Dylan. It's completely different. Aria, you know, Aria, you know, Ezra was kind of suspected from the beginning. She was dating, Ari was dating someone else, and now she's, like, connected to Ezra. Uh, Olivia never suspected it. Olivia, Dylan was her first boyfriend, so Olivia never suspected that Dylan would have done this. This is also kind of like the Spencer and Emily situation from Pray the Liars. You know, like, Emily should have trusted, you know, should not have trusted Allison, but, and, you know, Allie and, uh, uh Spencer told her about this. But this is different, because... The thing is, Olivia truly did love Dylan, and she never suspected him, so this is a pretty big scene. They're talking and everything, and he says he heard about her mom. She asked him where he's been seen. He admits that she won't believe him. His excuse was he shipped off to ministry camp after his parents found his condoms. Olivia confronts him about Springer, who alleged that uh, Dylan was the one who told him to bury the knife in the yard. So, Dylan is now framed Springer, um, and, uh... That's definitely interesting, because if you remember, Springer said that Dylan was the one who put him up to it. So now, Dylan is saying it's the other way around. Springer was the one who put Dylan up to it. So Luke returns home. He's not exactly warm and greeting Dylan. And uh, Remy visits Springer in the hospital. She asks him how he's feeling. She says that this town has a habit of jumping at conclusions before all the facts are straight. She tries to build a bridge between them, but Springer's not quick to reveal info about Dylan's shady ways. She comes up with a solution. She bribes Springer with power, power of media attention so long as he does something for her in return. So Olivia and Luke, they have this huge fight about Dylan. This is also when Luke finds out that Olivia and Dylan had sex. And, uh, you know, Luke's pretty upset about this. And he tells her that he, her Dylan, never went away. Um, she, you know, because she thought Dylan was away all the time. And he says, oh, Dylan never went away. So, um... This was pretty, this was a pretty big scene. Definitely, that was a really big scene. So, Colin and Olivia's mother chat. He says he'd been willing to mortgage his business for a ball, but she won't let him do that. He begs her to let him help her. I'm starting to wonder if Collins and uh, Olivia and Luke's mother kind of have, they have something going on. There's definitely something going on between them. I don't know what it is, but there's definitely something going on between the two of them. Uh, because I think there's just, there's more to this. Um, so Remy and Luke chat. Luke continues to be upset about Dylan and Olivia. He reveals that he can't believe that his sister had sex with him. And Remy says that she wants to wait until she's out of high school. So Olivia wants to talk to Caleb at the Collins estate. But Moran appears. She reveals that Collins might not be bad, all bad. And that he might be able to help her mother. So Collins is uh, sweeping up the mess. Uh, I already read this. Uh, Remy prepares a story to publish in her father's newspaper. But the injustice placed upon Dylan's father. She shows it to Dylan. In return, she wants answers, and for him to talk to the police, he agrees, and he tells her to publish it. But then when Marie returns home, her father's, like, pissed at her that she published this article behind his back, and he fires her. 
paper, so, um, Remy's now fired. Um, I don't know why he didn't want to publish it. So, I get, I guess we'll have to see, but, um, for some reason, our father did not want her to publish that. So, um, then we get a pretty, another really big scene. Luke walks into, um, the locker room, confronts Dylan. He wants to know how much of this was his fault. And Luke gets very physical with Dylan. He, um, things get crazy, though, because the shower faucet explodes. And Luke gets, and, um, Dylan says that he's not in this alone. It's not too late for him to make a deal. Dylan reveals he got out of the pack and he's now in the clear. And Luke wants to know what all this means. And I'm starting to suspect that Dylan might not be that bad after all. It might be, um... You know, because we do know that that girl, the devil girl, is working with him. We know that. We haven't really seen her. We're going to see her again next week. So, that's been my only complaint is that we really haven't seen much of her and I would have wanted to see a little bit more. Uh, there's really nothing much else I have to complain about. Dylan leaves as a steam from the shower grows stronger. Luke is attacked by a strange figure. And, um, Olivia calls Dylan. He doesn't pick up. She hears a sound from her house. Like someone sneaking in, Olivia's mom comes home after she, she was given help by Collins. Luke's nowhere to be found. Remy's walking home in the car. A newspaper from the Ravenswood Gazette whips around a pit, white picket fence. She sees a ghost, a young boy. Luke comes home uh, and tells Remy everything that happened. Luke says that Dylan knew everything that he was supposed to be in the car that went over the bridge. Luke continues saying that Collins re re reordered re the pack to save Dylan's life. So... Collins and Dylan might have some sort of bond going on. I don't know if it's a friendship or if they're related or something. You know, I don't know. It could be anything. Honestly, Ravenswood is one of the most, um, one of the great things about Ravenswood is just the overall mystery. They, they throw more answers at you. They're starting to throw more answers at us, but, um, they're not exactly telling us everything. Because then the show will be over. So then we get the huge, the last scene of the episode on our way home. Remy sees Dylan in her car with Mr. Collins and, um... They have something going on. So we don't know what's going on between the two of them. Somehow those two are working together. Now I thought that Dylan was working with that devil girl. The devil little girl. Which I think we're going to see next week. They did show a promo where she's in it. So I think we're probably going to see her next week. But um, overall. Uh, my overall thoughts on this episode. Another great episode for Mel Ravens. But now next week. Let me just get to next week. Next week's going to be a very big, very big episode. Because... Hannah is going to Ravenswood, and I'm very interested in figuring out how Pretty Little Liars is going to show, you know, Hannah wanting to go over there, because as we know, she's not over Caleb yet, that's the big thing, she's probably going to go over there because, as she thinks, she thinks Caleb's cheating on her, so she probably wants to continue their relationship, she doesn't want them to break up or anything, so I'm assuming that's what she's going to do, but it's probably going to be... I am going to tell you guys, do not expect them to get back together that episode. I don't think they're going to get back together. In fact, I think things are going to end up worse for them in that episode. I think uh, Caleb's probably going to confess his love to Miranda because it seems like he really does love her. And um, he's going to be cordial to Hannah and everything. He's going to act like he loves her, but it, he's going to ultimately have to come between the decision of Hannah or Miranda. And, uh, ooh, that rhymes, Hannah Miranda. Also, it looks like Miranda might want to, um, somehow leave, but I don't think she can because she is a ghost. Um, my big question is, how are Dylan and Collins working together? That's my big question. How are they working together? Um, also, what does Collins have going on with Olivia and Luke's mother? What's, what's the whole thing going on there? Um, is Dylan really that bad? He kind of seemed like this episode that he isn't as bad as we think. That's what it seems like, um... Is Springer bad? Because you never know what might happen with Springer. Uh, Springer could be a bad person. Uh, you know, that definitely, uh, that definitely was very interesting. So, and also, why was, how was Dylan kind of, uh, um, evoked from the pact? Why was he not including it? Why did he not go, you know, why did he not go into the river, you know, over that car into the river? Why did that not happen to him? Why is there only five, not six? Oh, what happened with that? You know, that was definitely, that was probably the strange part of the episode. And what's this strange ghost woman about? And also, what's the whole thing with the spiders? I'm definitely interested in finding that out as well. Um, so that's it for my review. Again, fantastic episode. Really loved it. And, um, I will see you guys in the next video, which will be my review of the Vampire Diaries. So see you then. Bye.